a lot of healing to be done. So like in Craigan, for example, that was um that was Patter Hefford's club, the 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 young PSNI man who had his leg blown off in a dissident bombing. And uh, I mean Patter was a fanatical herder in football for the Greg and Kickhams since he was a kid, you know. Uh, Irish speaker, you know. I mean, when he was when he was at the Giltacht, uh, when he oh, he must have been fifteen or sixteen, he uh, he kissed one of my sisters mm. at the Giltacht, and he established himself then as a stalwart for the Craig and Senior Footballers, and you know won the Antrim Intermediate Championship with them, and when he was in his mid twenties, then he applied to join this new police force, the PSNI. That we had so dearly wanted, and we had we had championed this and fought for this. The old, the notorious old Royal Royal Ulster Constabulary, an overwhelmingly Protestant force, was disbanded, and this PSNI promised a new beginning. You know, and um, I mean, I uh, you know, no Potter, and he is he is a force. I tell you, even in his wheelchair, and he plays the wheelchair hurling. And he is as tough as nails. But when he told his teammates at the first team meeting of the new season, he waited up till everyone had spoken. He told me this himself. He stood up and he told his band of brothers that he was joining the new force. He said, he said with no hint of irony to me, it, it went down like a bomb. You know, and uh, what the fuck are you thinking? You can't go through with this pattern. Like, it's not going to be acceptable here. And uh, after the meeting, no one said a word to him. His, his boyhood friends never spoke to him again. Now, this is... You know, and he, stubborn as he is, he went to the first training session of the year. And he told me himself, you know, as soon as he... As soon as he went into the changing room, the, the chatter stopped, you know, and uh, he went ahead in silence. And when he went out onto the pitch, the manager ignored him. Teams were picked for training games. He was left out. The pattern was a stubborn, stubborn man, you know, and just couldn't get his head around the gross inhumanity of this, the unfairness of this. And he just stayed out in the field and played as a spare man. No one passed him the ball. Nobody acknowledged him. And then posters started going up around the parish. Like, we have to account for this. Mm. You know, I mean, this this happened. It has to be accounted for and it can't be glossed over. You know, and the Craigan Club's a great club and the work they do is brilliant. And, uh, I mean, all changed now, but posters started going up warning the young people around the parish about joining the PSNA, you know, posted opposite his family home in the phone box opposite. And you know what Patter did? Well, wow. He kept training, never missed a session. You know? Mm -hmm. And uh, he spoke to, because the family had been involved with the club for generations, one night after a session when he was really getting it very, very, very tough, this this boycott, this silence. He said to a very senior official in the club, who I know, you know, and I have plenty of time for a great time, and he does great work in the club, and he gives of his time, all of that. He said, look, I need your backing on this. Like, we're supposed to be a new beginning. P.S. and I, so we're, you know, we're supposed to be embracing it and joining it. He said, I can't, so. Can't do it. And he told him, look, you're you're putting the club in a very awkward situation, son. You know, and uh, you know, eventually, it just got too much, too personal. You know, he he he, he left the train and one day, drove home, and never went back. You know, and uh, you know, he feels that still very, very, very mm. deeply. You know, and the people attempted to. Make amends for that. Well, 
I'm not sure that you, I'm not sure how you could make amends for that. I mean, this was a tremendous athlete. You know, he, he uh, I mean, he, he then joined, he then joined the PSNI. Yeah. Right. And, uh, he, he was insistent that he would do that. And he said, he told me, you know, he said, look, I was a fish out of water immediately, you know. You know, Martha Wainwright's great line, these are not my people, I should never have come here. And typical of him, you know, he kept on because he said, look, this is the right thing. He is like the stubborn bastard. Like, such a fantastic, I mean, I mean a stubborn bastard, like you would never, ever turn padder. Like there's no way you could turn him. What does he do? He forms the PSNI Gaelic football team. And uh, they played against the guards in 2002. Behind closed doors in Dublin then with the names of their team anonymized. And then they played their first ever club game against us and Bridget's. And I pushed that and pushed that. And there was a huge fanfare. I don't know if you remember it. The RT cameras came, BBC, Channel 4. Everybody was there at our at our pitches up at Harlequins. And uh Padder was marking me. It was absolutely hilarious, you know. He's filthy, you know. <laughs> oh, it's absolutely filthy. And uh afterwards there we are all in the Harlequins clubhouse and it 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 was so optimistic, you know, it, it just to me it was this is exactly where we want our society to be going, you know. This, the chief constable was there. You know, like, oh, this is brilliant. You know, this is exactly where we want to be. You know, and then shortly after the game, because I did all the interviews and all the pushing of it and all of that, um, graffiti went up in the city centre. Shame on you, Joe. Right. Now, to be fair, I was fucking thrilled. I was like, oh my god, this was like pre-Twitter <laughs> abuse for you. God, I've been, I've been, I, I've been saying. And uh, what we thought was a breakthrough turned out not to be a breakthrough at all, you know. And then within within a couple of years, Patter was marked out for assassination. And some of the great patriots of Ireland crawled under his car in the dead of night and planted a bomb under his car. And he uh, had his legs blown off, you know. And... Uh, He uh, he still didn't quit, you know. He's the full back now for the Ulster wheelchair hurling team. <laughs> they played twelve games a year, and uh, but he 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 never he has never lost his anger, you know. I mean that that was the thing, that was the thing that was. You know, in a way, most upsetting for me. But uh, he, uh, when he was in a coma, no one from the club, apart from two, two of the committee members, visited his parents. His father, Frank, had played for Craigan, was the you know was a referee, very popular referee, and was the treasurer of the club and. Uh, when the two boys came to the house, you know what they said? They said, we're not here on behalf of the club. We're only here in our personal capacity, you know? Hmm. And, uh, I mean, that, that has to be answered for, you know, it has to be accounted for. How do you mean? Just, How do you account for that? Well, what I mean is that we can't pretend, we can't pretend that it didn't happen yeah. and that everything's okay. And that, cause you know, we, we, we demand answers for injustices. Hmm. We demand answers. You know, we don't say, well, you know, that was okay. Uh, you know, some Catholic people were set up for assassination and, and, and RUC officers and soldiers colluded, et cetera, et cetera. But look, let's, you know, bygones be bygones. You know, and what was most upsetting for me was Pater, you know, Pater would tell you this himself. He said to me, he said, I am a very bitter person. He said, I am a bitter person and this has, this has, marred my life and will mar my life you know i cannot 
cannot accept this, you know. And I mean, he was in hospital for a year, pisses through a urostomy bag, shits through a colostomy bag. He has one of these mobile seat covers that stops him rolling over when he sits in the car. He had to be invalided out of the police force, you know. And uh, he's got bits of foam from the car seat and shrapnel from the car in his body. You know, so every now and again he has to go into hospital and have a piece of metal removed, you know. And uh, you okay? It's desperate. As he said himself, you know, when he joined, he said, we were promised peace, a new beginning, you know. I thought I'd remain part of my community, a community I loved. I thought I'd play football for Craig and drink pints and O'Boyles, that we'd have children. I'd take the underage teams. Now I'm in a wheelchair. I live in North Down. This wasn't supposed to happen, you know. It's a life, but it's not my life. <laughs>